In the header of the 3D view, we can see we've got this three-pronged icon down here, this with the, uh, the three arms uh, in the three colors here, red, green, and blue, which represent the axes X, Y, and Z, respectively. And then just to the right of it, we've got the three other icons, which represent translate, rotate, and scale. Uh, and as you can see, it actually updates in the 3D view as well, depending on what we have selected. We're not, we can actually also just shift select these just to get access to them all in the manipulator at the same time. But I'm just gonna keep to uh, just this translate uh, option at the moment. Just to the right of this also, we've got this um, pull down menu, which is gonna give us our orientation menu, just to, just to uh, just point out that that is just towards the right hand side there. We can click on the icon itself just to hide the manipulator off and on again. Uh, there's a shortcut key for this, which is control space. Uh, unfortunately, there is no shortcut keys set up by default, but we could always add them um, to actually change between the, uh, the gizmo types, this manipulator types here. Um, however, uh, personally, I actually don't really use the manipulator that much anyway, uh, because there are other potentially more efficient ways of being able to work, which you might appreciate, which we'll get into a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, I'll just wanted to point out not only was the those there, but in the tool shelf at the top here, we can also see that those same options are represented here, translate, rotate, and scale. Uh, the major difference is, is, is that um, rather than just changing the gizmo type, this is actually just going to initiate the, the, the operation, just launch into the tool. So for example, if we just click on this one here, it actually begins to start to immediately translate as we move the mouse across the screen. Um, the uh, usefulness of that is obviously up for debate, but um, that's just the way that this is set up at the moment. Personally, again, I don't actually use this area of the tool shelf just because the uh, shortcut keys are so easy to memorize and so um, quick and fundamental to the way that we work. So uh, as, as we can see down here, we've got S for scale, R for rotate, and it's G for grab, in fact, is the general blender parlance for um, uh, the translation that we do rather than it being T. Um, so if we just try that in the viewport, we've got G, with, to grab or to translate, and we've got R to rotate, and we've got S for scale. And um, that's essentially just the uh, the basics of moving there. I, I don't want to just get too much into the way in which we can operate with this just at the moment. I just wanted to point out that that's where these general uh, basic tools actually are. Uh, and just to note that if you just click on the, the arms of the gizmo, we can uh, just start to move it around. And then in the very, very center, we can um, move it freeform in the translate um, case. But otherwise, we can actually just... Uh, in the scale, we can just scale it in all directions by clicking in the very center or just specify a, an axis in general. Um, so that's just uh, basically just a quick overall glance at the, um, uh, the, the just the basically the 3D manipulator really. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly point that out and uh, then move on. But we will return back to uh, better and more efficient ways of working with this uh, a little bit later on. In order to add something or just create something into this scene, uh, all we need to do is just come up to the header in the info window that we have at the top of the screen here. There's just this sort of menu bar that we've got and we can see here there's a menu called add. If we just click on that, we get action uh, access to all our various different things that we can add. So for example, like meshes, curves and uh, text and all this kind of thing. So if we just come into this menu here, we get another sub object, uh, another sub menu. So for example, we can click on the cube there and we can enter this cube into the scene. And also note that it enters the cube at the location of the 3D cursor, as we can see there. And um, we also get a little bit of an information in the bottom of the tool shelf here in this toolbox area, which gives us a little bit more access to uh, what we've actually just created. So if we just create one more thing, um, just go up to add and then go mesh and then perhaps uh, create a UV sphere. Uh, we can see we actually get access to the amount of segments and rings and so on that actually make up the general form of the sphere, uh, the density of the mesh that creates it. And uh, one last thing I'd just like to point out is just the shortcut key for that, which is go shift A, and then we essentially get the um, all, all the, op the operations that are available from that menu just at the location of the cursor where that happens to be at the time. Okay, so there comes a time that we might want to view the world that we're creating here or just simply looking at from multiple different angles or uh, often at the same time, or maybe we want to just change the type of camera that we're looking through. Right now, this is a user perspective, and we can tell that really because the, um, in fact, this is just a cube which has been stretched out quite heavily along the y-axis and then just duplicated and it's just in perfect parallel. Uh, so you kind of get this um, train track kind of a look, this kind of these train rails that kind of appear that the probably going to converge at some distance on the horizon point. Um, 
uh, which is typical of the way we see things in the real world. This is obviously much more related to the uh, reality. Uh, in fact, if we actually just take a look, we can see these faces, which are exactly the same size as these faces in the foreground. It's just these ones in the background look a lot smaller, again, as we're used to seeing in the real world. But uh, at times with, there might be a, a usefulness for uh, being able to see this in perfect orthographic mode, even in 3D. Um, so uh, what we might want to do is just come down to the view menu here and just toggle between perspective and orthographic and you can see that this is mapped to the uh, number five on the numpad there as well so if we actually just click on this now we can see we no longer get any foreshortening we get a true representation of what actually is happening in this 3d scene we can see that this is these are perfectly in parallel and the faces are the same size on either side um, so uh, often this is kind of un unintuitive though because um, obviously we're not really used to viewing the world like this but um, that is where that is and oftentimes it's extremely useful to be able to uh, occasionally launch into this kind of view. Uh, you can see down here there's also these other typical fundamental views that you often get like uh, the left and right views, we've got front and back views and you've got top and bottom views uh, and we've also got a camera view here uh, so if there's a camera in the scene this is, this is going to position us through it um, and which you can see we're actually looking at now. So uh, also we can see we can if we actually start to rotate out of that scene uh, we're now back into a, a user orthographic view until we actually um, toggle the perspective back again. Uh, the, there's a couple of ways in which we can actually uh, um, uh, sort of divide the screen quickly into four different quadrants and we can see that in one place which is in the property sidebar at the bottom here, toggle quad view. Uh, you can just toggle this on and off by the way, this property sidebar with the N key. Uh, so if we just press toggle quad view, you can see we get our typical orthographic views here, top, front and uh, one of the side views. Um, and also we get the camera view there. Now, what you might have just noticed is um, when I went to try and rotate away from the, um, the camera there that we're actually viewing in the scene in uh, with just using the middle mouse button as we've gone over, uh, you can see it's now launched into a user orthographic view, which might not have been what we wanted to do. We might have just wanted to change the position of that camera there. Uh, so what we can do is, um, if I just actually just toggle that back and forth again, just to reset that view, what we can do is um, we can actually lock the camera to the view. And now what that means is it's actually uh, taking on the behavior that I might kind of expect. Uh, so that's something handy to know. Um, so I'll just turn that off for now though. Um, if there doesn't happen to be a camera in the scene, by the way, you don't have a camera that you're using to render, you just happen to want to view the scene and uh, you know the, this doesn't exist here, it will just create that user perspective mode and it will just launch into that for you. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, we've got these th uh, four quadrants here of the screen that we can't actually reposition, we can't resize these as such, so uh, we might like to, um, but there is a way to actually uh, uh, create our own um, 3D views very quickly and we'll just go over that shortly. Uh, but this is just a very, very quick method of being able to just get a very, very fast view of your whatever we happen to be looking at at all the various different angles that you might find uh, useful, really. Um, something to note here is we've got this lock that shows up once we're in this quad view. Um, uh, what this means is if we actually try and, as we saw a second ago, as we try and rotate out of that, um, it actually launches into an orthographic view there. Um, if we were to un check that lock and do this, you can see we've now launched into a user orthographic, but if I just reset that again, um, we can take, uh, we can make sure that this is locked and then that means if I try and rotate around in these orthographic two-dimensional views, it's not going to let me, so we're not going to accidentally um, sort of uh, come out of the mode that we might be finding useful there. There's also this box mode here, which essentially means um, it's going to try and synchronize the views slightly in these 2D viewing planes. Um, the other thing to uh, to note that there's a, um, a a shortcut key for this, which is Control Alt and Q. So we can just quickly go Control Alt and Q, and note that as I use that uh, shortcut key to toggle quickly between, uh, you can see we're maximizing the right orthographic. Uh, we over here will maximize the top orthographic because the curse happens to be in that window and then we can maximize the camera perspective here uh, by using that shortcut key there so that's uh, something handy to know also note that it's in this viewing menu just at the top here toggle quad view Now, unfortunately, um, I actually am not working on a computer at the moment which has a numpad. I'm just working on a small laptop. And uh, so 
uh, this is not extremely useful for me. Um, it's kind of quite cumbersome and uh, you might be in the same boat. So I'll just sort of point out something that uh, the, the Blender developers have added to be able to make things a little bit easier in this circumstance. And what that is, is um, in the user preferences. So if we just launch our user preferences window or just use the um, shortcut control alt U, but I'll just dig it out of the file menu for now. And if we come over to uh, the input here, we can use the emulate numpad. If I actually just click that on there. What that means is uh, the actual, um, instead of the using the top, um, the numbers that feature above the QWERTY keyboard, um, what we can use them now, th those numbers above the QWERTY keyboard will now take on the characteristics of the uh, numpad shortcut keys. Uh, so I can use number one now and number three above the QWERTY keyboard to just switch between those um, options and use a number five to toggle between the perspective and orthographic, uh, which is quite useful because um, normally those uh, numbers are mapped to these layers that we have down here, uh, which you might not find as useful as actually um, uh, 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 switching between various different cameras often. Perhaps you do that much more than you would do this down here. Uh, there's one more thing that I wanted to point out, which is uh, we can go back to the user preferences. Uh, and um, in fact, let's just demo what's going to happen without this option on. We can see we're in the top orthographic mode at the moment. If I actually just move quick by, by rotating, we can see we're now in a user orthographic mode. Um, this is something that we can do by accident in other applications and it can be quite kind of frustrating. Uh, but we've got a mode here which uh, will allow us to um, potentially uh, switch to a behavior which we might find more um, intuitive or, or, or preferable. Uh, and, and that's within the interface tab of the user preferences. We can come down here to auto perspective. And now when we check this on, which is a feature I like to have on quite a lot actually, um, if once I use the number one to switch to a front orthographic view here, if I want to just then use the middle mouse button to row start to rotate, um, uh, it just switches and assumes that I actually now no longer want to be in orthographic view and want to be able to see the scene from a perspective angle. Um, and so uh, there you have it. That's um, uh, the, the, the fundamentals of the, the options available to us with those standard views. Just one last thing I just wanted to point out is that there is, uh, although we have a camera um, in the scene which has its own set of lens properties and uh, many different other settings that you might come to expect for a camera, uh, we actually have its own, uh, this, this user perspective, the, the user part of it um, has its own sort of values and you can see here that we've got this lens value here which we can actually just switch as well to um, kind of modify the view to something that you might find useful as well. So that's um, all I wanted to sort of go over on this little segment, but uh, hopefully that gives you um, a quick shortcut into getting um, navigating around a little bit more usefully. Okay, so let's just talk very briefly about some snapping options that are available to us. We've just got this basic cube here to demonstrate this with, um, and this is just your standard cube, which is two units in each of the dimensions. If I just press one to just jump into the front orthographic mode, we can see it just sort of lines up quite nicely on that grid. We can see that these lines obviously must represent the units then because uh, we know it's two units across. Um, now, if we actually just come down to the header of the 3D view, we can see that we've got this uh, magnet icon on down here if we just switch that on uh, you can see that it's actually now uh, we will we have these snapping element options available to us in this pull down menu as well just the typical things that we've got we've also got this increment now notice that it does say increment and not grid although it does look like uh, it's kind of a grid icon uh, I just want to just um, clear up some possible confusion here um, in that if I actually just take this off for a second uh, just to just to make this point really but now if I just grab the center of that gizmo there and just slide it off the grid slightly um, and now we can see that if we actually just switch our um, magnet icon on the snapping uh, tool we can now start to move it incrementally um, I'm actually just going to zoom out slightly so it just shifts away from that smaller grid setting and then we can see it's actually moving if we actually take a look in the far left of the header here we can see that it's actually moving um, perfectly one unit each time 
um, and but we can see its actual location is off the grid so you can see that it hasn't actually snapped it to the grid and then started moving it along the grid uh, it actually just maintains its absolute position and then just shifts it perfectly in increments so it really truly is increments and not necessarily a grid uh, which might sort of uh, confuse someone at first um, to be able to actually take that behavior where it kind of like launches to the grid and then kind of moves we're going to need an extra key uh, which is the shift s menu and that means that we've then got this first option which is selection to grid uh, and then you can now see that it's just shifted perfectly and the location now is just zero so if i just undo that you can see what those values were before now if i go to shift s and then selection to grid you can see it's now perfectly aligned to the grid and now if we start to move incrementally oops just zoom out again uh, you can see it's moving perfectly one unit and now we can see it's perfectly three units in, in absolute space. Um, so that's just something to be aware of there. If we actually just zoom in a little bit more, you can see that it's actually shifted the increments to the lowest denominator of the grid line that it draws in the 3D view. And so now it's uh, it's doing it at a tenth of that value. Uh, the grid settings here, by the way, are just a little bit further down. Um, if we just go to uh, take a look on the grid floor area here, we can see we've got some line scale and subdivisions. Uh, so we can play with those settings if you like. Um, but obviously we've got these other um, snapping elements to be able to choose from, which are all fairly straightforward. Uh, just one last thing, if we actually just switch this off, um, what we might like to do is, is um, take a look at what the uh, shortcut keys are for this. For the snapping element, what we would be able to do is go Control, Shift and Tab and then we get the snap type at the location of the cursor in the 3D view, which might you might find a bit quicker. Uh, and then finally, um, which is probably one of the more handier um, uh, things to be able to do, is we can actually just uh, press control, hold control while we uh, left click on one of the arms of this or one of the axes of this um, gizmo here, this 3D manipulator, and then that will uh, snap us in that direction. Uh, so we can quickly just enable the snapping by just holding down the control key. So if I just hold down control, left click this arrow, and then move it a, a little bit, a little along the ways there, you can see that it's now at the um, location of eight units along the Y direction, which is what we've just done. And also we can see in the toolbox here that that's just happened there. We can find tune that if we want. Uh, so that's the basics of snapping. There's more to it than that. We can snap to other objects. We can um, do a couple more things than that, but uh, let's just uh, leave it there for now.